Fresco is divided into day sections, and each section is a specifically laid area of plaster that is laid fresh that morning. And then throughout the day, you build up that image and finish that image. And it might be as small as a face, or it might be as large as an expansive sky or background. So the size of the day section is kind of determined by the complexity of what you are painting. Frescoes are basically painted on wet plaster while the plaster dries. So you've got about eight hours, and as you mix the colors and apply them onto the wet plaster, they are absorbed into the plaster, and then it becomes integrated with the plaster wall laid that day. Fresco goes back to ancient Greece, 5th century BC, where it flourished and spread throughout Europe by the Greek settlers as they colonized the rest of the Mediterranean. In the U.S., creating large frescoes, there's, I think, only one other person I know of. There's not too many of us. I think you need walls and a real determination. There's a lot easier ways to paint other than fresco, and it requires a great deal of time and material and dedication. I got interested in fresco painting when I moved to Italy at age 19. No one really understands uh, the impact that wall murals have unless you're standing in the actual physical space. And when I'd see these frescoes in the books, they were interesting as pictorial things. But when I stood in the historic sites and saw these frescoes, they came alive to me in a very different way. And from then I thought, well, geez, you know, I really like to do frescoes. The fresco project will be done in the center court at the Ridgedale Center, and Mark's going to be working with some teens that we have selected from two of our outreach partners. And the fresco will be moved to the Minnetonka Center for the Arts and unveiled at our anniversary celebration. In addition to celebrating our 10th anniversary in this building, we're celebrating 60 years as an organization. This fresco is means by which to have outreach within the community to students to learn about the technique of fresco and participate with me in creating the work. And I guess that's one of the ideas I wanted to teach them is a little bit about teamwork. So they have been involved in a lot of different areas to give them a real understanding that it's not just, geez, you're presented with a, a nice fresco wall, go paint it. So they, it, that's what makes it so different than in the other medium. It has been awesome because I didn't know what fresco painting was until he explained it. But I think it's just really special in how we're doing this now and keeping it in 2012. So I think it's really amazing. The fresco I created for the Minnetonka Center for the Arts had to do with social changes in the last five or ten years. I go back a long time with Minnetonka Center for the Arts. I first taught here when I was 18, 19 years old. Mark Balma is a world-renowned artist and built his career, primarily his first love is is portraits, but he's also a renowned fresco artist and was actually commissioned to do some pretty notable frescoes around town, uh, for example at St. Thomas, the new campus downtown, and he received a very large commission to do frescoes in cathedrals in Assisi, Italy. So he's been splitting his time for a number of years between the United States and Italy. He is also known to many by some very famous portraits that he's done. He did a portrait of both President Bush's. He's done a portrait of Margaret Thatcher. So his work is well known and well regarded. The word for painter in America is just simply painter, but we can also confuse it with house painter or a variety of kinds of painters. 
In most European cultures, there is a specific word for the painter who is creative or artist painter, and that's pittore. And the house painter is called in bianchino. Today we have to qualify ourselves, which I'm uncomfortable doing talking about myself, an artist painter. I don't like to call myself an artist. I think that's a compliment that others give somebody who paints. It, it's not something an artist should do to call himself. But it's the only, in some ways, the only way we can qualify ourselves is not having to do kitchens or, you know, or, or something else. I wrote Pietro Anagoni at 16 years old, and he was a world-famous portrait painter. And he wrote me back and said that he thought my drawings looked really good, and come when, he, when I came to Florence, seek him out, and he would help me as much as he, as he could. He helped me understand that really fine portraiture is about connecting with the spirit of that person, not just a likeness. And it really calls for an artist to pull down the walls around him and open himself up to the spirit of the person in front of them. And that's what I strive to do in my portraits as well. Sometimes I'll zero in on something that really speaks to me about them, but I usually come around to looking at their eyes or somewhere around their cheekbones or their brows. Their hands are very important and hands speak a lot to me. Many people can hide certain things about their inner selves in their face. We've learned to sort of put a mask on, and, but sometimes the hands will say much more about the person. Most of the materials that I use are all of a traditional origin, both in oil painting and in fresco painting. They're all ground by hand on a stone slab, and it's a series of pigments ground in walnut oil and lavender oil. Painters like Leonardo da Vinci, Van Eyck, these painters used lavender oil because it could capture details better than other mediums. The painter in those days was part of the Alchemist Guild. And some of the colors that I'm using were also used in medicines. I mean, in fact, one of my colors, my yellow, is, is actually arsenic. So that gave them a unique knowledge about the materials. And lavender oil was, again, another distilled, rarefied plant substance. And I think that's what's required to really go past the, just the color yellow and to really understand what the medium is capable of. And that's my journey into really understanding these materials. And the colors are put on almost in a watercolor method, very different than a, a lot of oil painting, which tends to be thicker. This actually uses the whole effect of light passing through these colors onto the reflective nature of the wood panel that I usually paint on. And it creates a very rich painting full of depth as well, too. In some ways, in painting this way, you feel a little bit connected with a more uh, a history of painting, which is very different than going to an art store and buying a group of colors and tubes and then coming home and squeezing them out and, and away you go trying to make something look like something. I'm drawn to the, the traditional materials because I think there's still a lot to be explored in them. Michelangelo said, the end of his life, I feel like a matchstick maker and I'm just learning my craft. And I think that the same holds true. I mean, I just, you, you can just scratch the surface of this and keep going. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.